Well, hello friends. Welcome back to Browser Hacking. Today, we are going to make text copying for the browser and for the uh, HTML widget in general, because that's something that we haven't had and something that is such a natural part of, especially of embedding um, a web view into other GUI programs. Uh, you really want to be able to copy text from it. And that's what we're going to do today. So um, a couple of videos ago, I did basic selection stuff. Now that was kind of a struggle. Uh, hopefully this part will be a bit easier. So what we have already is um, the selection is represented by a start node and a character offset in that start node and an end node and a character offset in that end node. And these um, start and end nodes are in the layout tree. So not in the DOM tree, but in the layout tree. Um, and we'll, my idea for uh, generating the text selection is that we will just start at the uh, start node and just iterate through the tree in, um, uh, in pre-order and then um, accumulate the text into a string builder as we go. So uh, let's see if that works out. And I guess we'll want an API for this really, or not even, not even an API, but like if you press control C, this is really what you want to happen. So, um, I'm just thinking, should this be an action on the widget? Um, or should we handle it as a key event? Hmm, how do we do for the text editor widget? Control. So we have the copy um, member function on text editor widgets. And we create a copy action. So I think we'll take a, the same approach here. We'll create a copy action and then you can hook that up in your um, in your embedding environment. But we will bind the um, action to the uh, web page view. So let's see. In the web page view API, we will add um, <clears throat> action here. Copy action. All right, we're not going to do cut or paste because um, that will require implementing some kind of um, content editable support, which um, which we'll probably do eventually. It's just that it will be a bit more involved, and um, copy only requires reading from the from the document, right? So we should be able to do that fairly easily. So we'll just expose this like this so that you can grab at it when you're embedding this. Okay, and then in the constructor for this guy, we will instantiate this copy action. Common, no, what are those called? GUI action, common actions, yes. Make copy action. And then the way it will work is, um, the way it will work is that, um, I'm thinking in my head, <laughs> um, it will call copy on something. So um, maybe on page, um, I guess really whichever frame is like the focused frame. So we don't have a concept of focused frames yet. That's something that we'll need to add. So right now we'll just uh, we'll just assume the main mainframe, but there should really be such a thing as a focused frame so that we can support having multiple frames and then selecting in, um, in different frames. But anyway. So I guess we can we can put this into a helper function actually. Copy selected text, let's call it. And that gives us an API for this as well. 
copy selected text and uh, then we need the clipboard functionality from the GUI so GUI clipboard set data and then we need to pass the data so um, Let's put that somewhere, page, mainframe. Um, I don't know, maybe we can put the logic here for now, actually. So uh, text, and we'll grab a mime type, like text plain, because we're not going to copy like formatting and stuff like that right now. That would be significantly trickier. I'm just going to do plain text copy. Copy action, okay. And then copy selected text. Actually, maybe the API should really be um, string selected text. And then we can do this in the action instead, just in the action callback. So here, Set data, selected text. Okay, that's pretty good. And then this API here becomes a little, a little more logical, I think. You would have an API that just returns the text selection. So we'll make a string builder. And then um, we want to get the root of the uh, layout tree. So that would be our page, mainframe, document, um, layout node for that, uh, otherwise null footer. And actually that, let's static cast that to a layout document so that we are working with the correct type of layout node. Um, you don't like that because I need to put that paren there. All right. So if there is no layout root, return a null string. Oh, wait, we already had a layout root helper. Dude. All right. <laughs> um, then we'll just do this. Um, Cool. Okay, and then um, selection is layout root selection. Cool. If selection, if that is not valid, that means that we don't have a start or end node, so there's no selection to iterate over. Return null string. Otherwise, um, so let's see. Layout node is selection normalized start layout node. Um, how do we do this? Layout node and layout node. Um, no, this will probably have to be something a bit. We can't just do plain for loop here. This has to be a bit different. Um, so we'll do something like this. Current node. Our layout node is fine. So we'll start at the start. Okay. And then we'll do a thingy like this. And then we want to go to the next node at the end of the loop. So next in pre-order. Yeah, OK. And then I guess here we also want to get the um, We know the start position also has an index. 
index in node, right? So that's how many characters into that node. Because if you have um, a document that starts with like hello world, but you've selected world, then you're starting, a, you might be starting a few characters into the first node, right? So <clears throat> really here, um, let's see. So maybe we'll make a helper function that copies text out of a node. So what would that look like? Copy, which is text from the node. Mm. So if node, if is layout text. If it is text, then we can We can copy it. We just need add text. Okay, so if it is layout text, return to layout text node. Um, we have text for rendering. I think we can use that. Otherwise, we will return a null string. Okay. All right. And maybe we should have an optional offset here as well. Um, so let's see. If offset is, if there's no offset, which will be the case for anything other than the start and end um, parts of the selection. So if there's no offset, just return text. Otherwise, return text substring um, starting an offset ending at text length minus offset. I mean, that's not ending at, it's the length of the substring. Okay. And so we do a builder append. Um, Text from layout node, layout node, and the, wait, hold on here. Selection is selection normalized. We have to normalize the selection because you can select from left to right or right to left. But if you select from right to left, then the start of your selection occurs after the end of your selection in, um, you know, in the DOM right so what we do then is we normalize the selection where we just swap uh start and end in case end is before start so that once we've normalized it it's guaranteed that um that the selection is first start then end it's easier to work with so let's see Fix this up a little bit. There we go. And that's that. Okay. Selection start index and in node. All right. And then here, wait, what do we do next? And then if no layout node, or no, if there's no layout node, then return builder to string, or let's just break. Okay, otherwise, builder append Text from layout node, layout node. And until we get to the end node, we don't need to care about the index. So I guess this can really be something more like this. While not layout node, and layout node is not layout root, so, um, selection end 
I have no idea. Okay, so once we get to the end of the selection, then we'll have to go one more time. So if we're now at the end, I mean, we should be at the end because otherwise we would have a null end, which wouldn't make any sense. So then we want to grab the selection and index. Okay, let's try it. This is pretty aggressive with regards to memory allocation, like it will allocate um, when creating substrings, it will allocate um, the string that we're building, although the string that we're building is probably not super avoidable. Uh, we're gonna have to allocate some kind of string buffer to do a copy, but we could definitely do, we could use like string views instead of creating Unix substrings. Okay, so we'll just copy some text and we died. So my assertion failed, okay. Mm. So let's see. I'm guessing then that we ran until layout node was null. Why wouldn't we get to the um, end node, I wonder? So selected from selection start to From this to this, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm stupid. <laughs> okay. While null layout node, that didn't make any sense. I'm not so used to writing while loops. I don't know, I tend to use for, but today I feel like using a while loop. And what happened? Okay, that's not very good. All right, we've copied something. Can we food txt? Get a text editor here, up in here, please. Ooh, look at that. We can paste it. Okay, so let's try to do some stuff here. Oh, that didn't go well. Assertion failed layout node on 108. Mm. I guess if the selection starts and ends in the same node, then um, then this here would already skip past the end. And so we would be here um, We would be here with null. Hmm. Right. So actually, if the selection starts and ends in the same node, then we have to do a little bit of a different thing. So if selection start, selection end, that node, then um so if the selection node is not a layout text 
Well, then there's just no text. Should probably return empty strings here rather than null strings, by the way. Maybe in these cases it should be null. I don't know. But here, like if you have no selection but life is otherwise valid. Like, or like you have a selection but it's not, you haven't selected a text object for some reason. I don't know. This is such a weird state. Um, but maybe it's possible. I just didn't really model it in my head. So, uh, to layout text, um, selection start node dot text for rendering dot substring. Um, selection start index and then the selection end index minus the start index that feels vaguely correct otherwise we know that we don't start and end in the same node so then we can do the first do the start node then do the middle nodes then do the end node okay And, oh wait, um, this thing needs to work differently for the start node versus the end node. I don't know why I thought I could share this code, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, it makes sense for the middle ones, if there's no offset at all, but the start and end need to work differently anyway. So, let's see, this is the start node. What we want to do here is, I mean, I guess we could um, pass in the um, well, what am I trying to do? No, let's not get fancy. Selection start index. Okay, so from there to start index. And then the middle loads are easy. They are just um, if is layout text layout node. Then builder append to layout text layout node text for rendering, and that's it. And then for the ending, we will do if is layout text, add node. Um, and then the same story as up here, except we will start at index zero and then end it at, or the length will be index in node, because that's where the selection ends. Oh, and we don't want to return, actually. What am I doing? Let's build or append. Okay. Get rid of that as well. So this code is, it feels a little bit awkward, but it's not so bad. Um, start node. And then we'll say like, no, middle nodes. And node, yeah. Okay, so we'll select very simple. 
and we're missing an E. Okay, so we have an off by one. And I'm guessing that is the guy right here that uh, we need to plus one so that we get, because um, the, um, the end position in the selection points at the last character in the selection, not the uh, character after, which is what we need to do to convert it into a length. So let's see, to the, uh, to the serenity, right? Dang it. Uh, okay. Browser built. Wait, did I not do that right? Um, I'm surprised that that does not, oh, wait, 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 no, no, I'm selecting within the same node, right. Uh, so, that's up here, but it's the same, same story. So, this will be a really good feature for stuff like the IRC client, which is using a um, web view to display all of the IRC channel content. Very simple browser built on the libweb. All right, come on. Am I not selecting correctly? Oh, yeah. Libweb? What? How am I still messing this up? Because I'm still putting it in the wrong freaking place. Okay. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now I've put it in all the different places. Um, this one should be the correct one. Okay, I'll select your user agent this time. Aha, beautiful. That's really cool, I think. Okay, so let's immediately go and test this. Um, on IRC. So let's bring up the IRC client and you can see that it's possible to select stuff here. Um, let's copy something. Like, can I copy? I don't know what I want to copy. Selection is probably a little flaky if... I can imagine that it's a bit flaky if um, content updates at the same time. So, hello friends. All right, I'm gonna copy what I said. And can I get a text editor? It works. That's so neat. What happens if we do this? I feel like we're not gonna get spaces. No, we do get spaces. Okay. Really cool. But wait, hold on. I'm only getting H for the end. Hmm. So that's not working quite right. Uh, we're gonna need to look into that one. So this one is using like a bold tag right here, as you can see. Um, that's Linus. Hello, Linus. Let's say hello to him. Um, okay, so let's work out why this is being weird. And um, let's actually just verify that I know how that DOM looks like. So I think that's like a B tag. Right, so it's a span, and then a B, and then a span. Okay. Mm. So we can recreate that in an HTML file. I think maybe it's wrapped in a pre actually. So span foo, or um, let's put a pretend timestamp. B. Um, I don't know what was there. Nickname. 
And hello there. Something like that. Seems like we have some um, some regression in the system that sometimes processes don't start. Okay, so if we select all that. I need to start pressing Control C. Okay, so it's wrong here too. That's good. Um, so in this case, we know that we have the um, multiple nodes case because we have a bold tag in the middle. So we get all the text, and then here, Brit, at the end of the selection. And that's a reference, actually, so I shouldn't make a copy. Same thing here. Hum, 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 hum. Oh, dude, look at that. I'm using the start position for the index. <laughs> that's why. OK. I was using the start uh, index in node for the end node selection. I'm making uh, making quite a few silly like um, copy paste mistakes lately. It's a bit goofy. Also I feel like it would almost be useful to have the text editor down here on the quick quick launch. So let's just add that right away because I keep um, like launching a terminal just to start a text editor and so on. And um, oh man where is this? Is it in my home directory? Taskbar. Yes. Okay. So let's put it here. Uh, text editor. Okay. All right. We have a text editor. Quick. Awesome. So now we can enjoy selecting the whole text and pasting the whole text. And it works beautifully. <sighs> Man, I love it. It's it's great. This is absolutely great. Um, I keep expecting double click to <laughs> to make it select stuff. Um, that would also be a good feature, but that's a different feature. I'm not going to do that one right now. Um, although, like. Um, Select all with control A might be an interesting feature. I guess that would just like get the very first node in the layout tree and the very last one and set those as the selection boundaries. Might be an interesting thing to have, select all. So let's see, let's commit that quick launch change, base, add text editor to the um, quick launch area and then a task. Um, I'm always starting text editors by opening a terminal and typing DE, which is a bit silly, and I can have an icon for it instead. All right, that's cool. Uh, and then we are adding the copy um, selected text API to web page view, and also a copy action that you can uh, integrate in your UI if you want. But even if you even if you don't pick up the copy action and put it in your UI, um, as long as the the web page view widget is focused, the action is still um, listening for Control C, right? So. Um, new button. Um, implement basic text selection, basic te text copy. 
Bing. You can now press Control C to copy the selected text in a web page view to the system clipboard. Very cool. That is very cool, I think. Hmm. So then let's add that select all thing because that would be really nice because then I can press control A and then control C just to copy everything, right? That would be so, just so nice. So let's do that. And let's implement it as an action. So we'll do like a, like a select all action. And I guess we could actually have a select all API because why not? So that would be a select all action. And how's that gonna work? Well, I'm not sure. Select all. Okay, so start out the same. Uh, if we don't have a layout root, there's nothing we can do. But if we do have one, then layout root, selection, set start. And we'll start in the the layout root, I guess, at index zero. So we just start at the very, very start of the layout tree. And then we need to find the end of the layout tree. So hmm, how the heck do we find that? I guess we can just call like last child until we get the very last child. Um, Last layout node is layout root um, last child. Okay, so then um, wait, how do we do this? First layout node is layout root. All right. Yes, like this. And then we only do this if this whole thing works out. So can we call set? Mm, last layout node index in node. And then that will be, we'll have to compute that once we know the last layout node. If last layout node is layout text, then the index is um, to layout text. Text for rendering length minus one. Okay, so that means we'll get all of the selected text. Okay, and then we just need to put some curlies like that. Okay, and then let's assert that we found some first and last. Okay, and then let's make a loop. So next is last layout node, um, last child. Right? That has to be the right way to do this, to get to the um, very last thing. It's so called last child, and if there's no next, break. Otherwise, last layout node is next. Okay. Oh, we need to hook it up with an action. So m select all action is GUI common actions make select all action oh we don't have that api we should invent that api um, just call select all so let's add an api for this because it's a useful like it's a general action right or a common action if you will 
The purpose of the common action is just to have like a, a place where you can instantiate an action that has the same keyboard shortcut, the same icon uh, in every app, uh, which is, I think, quite nice. It's, it's like one of those things that always feels so off when you're using a, a system that has like, um, I don't know how it's like these days, but like in the past, if you would mix like GNOME and KDE apps and uh, apps that were not KDE or GNOME, um, you would always have like these completely inconsistent keyboard shortcuts. And I don't know, that always, it always feel, felt so bad to me, like kind of a sore thumb thing. Anyway, so for the select all action, do something like that, and that would just be Control A. And ooh, do we have a select all icon? Select all. We do. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Somebody made one. I don't think that was me. Thank you, whoever made the select all icon. And we can actually um, pick up the. Use, we can use the select all helper here now too. So GUI. Actually, we are in the GUI. Common actions makes select all action. Oof. All right. I don't remember what that icon looks like. I guess it will be a surprise when we uh, when we see it. Although I'm not actually hooking these action up, actions up anywhere in the UI. Which we could do. We could put like, we have a context menu in the um, browser tab, context menu. We have one right here. It would be nice to have some state like, um, like whether there is, if there is a selection, then the copy action will be enabled, stuff like that. Um, I guess whenever we change the selection, we could notify the the widget layer of LibWeb that um, now there's a selection, now there's no selection. Um, anyway, so let's see. Copy that, paste that here. Very, very cool, select all. That didn't work out the way I'd hoped. Okay, where's the select all action? Oh, it's like that. Oh, that's kind of a cool action. I mean, cool icon, look at that. It's like um, this marching ants around something. So it's like select the whole thing. That's um, it's a very idiomatically strong icon, I would say. Okay, so why does my select all thing not work? Page, wait, control A, yeah, yeah, page view. So let me see. Am I just being a dumbass here somehow? Are we even running this code? We call set, but then nothing happens. Maybe we should. Update, do we have some like did change page, did change selection? Nah. Really an update should be everything that we need. It's a little bit hackish because probably this should not be done at the page view layer, but like at a lower layer because page view is like, it's just a presentation layer really uh, that implements a specific widget. But, oh, it does work. Okay, wait. And if I move the mouse, it stops being selected. Why is it like that? But this way it sticks. Hmm. What the heck? <laughs> Why does the selection disappear, I wonder? So who normally calls this? In mouse selection, okay. Let's 
Does anybody do anything in response to page to change selection? I will just call update. Okay. But here we'll just set the selection boundary. Set the end. Um, selection. And it's only sets to start. Wait, hold on. On mouse move, we do something with it. In mouse selection. So if you're in mouse selection, then it will set the end. But why would we be in mouse selection? Oh, hold on. Um, we're always calling this helper here. So maybe let's just make it print out stuff so we can see if this is being called. I feel like the selection is being set whenever I'm mouse moving, which is definitely not what we want. We only want it to be set like that if you're also holding down the mouse. Okay, so it doesn't change unless I hover something else. But I don't... Like if I mouse within the same text node, it's fine. But if I mouse into something else, it breaks. And I'm so confused. Mm -hmm. Maybe when we hover different things, then maybe it's the way I set up the start and end. Like I start at the very root, and what we should instead do is like start at the first text that we find, because that would be functionally equivalent anyway. So it's a little bit of a workaround, but. Um, let's see if we can if we can try that out. So, do we have something like first or um, that root first child of type? Um, so let's do this. First, we'll do a pre-order traversal. If no next, break, all right. And then um, first layout node is mm. oh, yeah, we just want this one to be a Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, no. Actually, that's a weird way of writing that. Let's just write it this way. But here we want to, um, if next is if next is not text, or if next is text. Or wait, <laughs> what am I thinking? If um, is layout text first layout node, then break. Okay, so we'll break at the first text. Maybe that will make it sticky. Because I was thinking, like, what if the root, like, r starting the selection at the root node, maybe that's goofing things up. Um, no, it still doesn't like it. All right. Um, so how on earth, I mean, I guess we can go and look for the very last text node as well. Um, what would that be? It would be like, um, <clears throat> essentially it would be the same thing. We would just start here, last layout node is, first layout node, and then continue traversing from here. 
So next in pre-order, and then say, um, so we'll start at first layout node. And we can actually write this out like a regular for loop this time. But the difference is that we want to break if we encounter, or no, we want to remember the last text one that we've seen. So if layout node. Last layout node is layout node. Okay, so that's that's a bit goofy, but now what we're doing is we're just finding the first layout text and the last layout text in document order. Um, okay, that just hangs it. Um, because I'm not iterating correctly. All right, now it works. Okay, so I'm not gonna dig into this right very now, why this is necessary, but basically, um, if we look at the layout tree, then there's all this fluff here, like a layout document, has a layout block inside of it, has a layout block inside of it, and then blah, 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 and it's only here we encounter the first layout text. So what we do now is we just skip over these layout nodes here until we get to this one. This one is the first in document order that we actually um, select. And likewise, we'll um, try to get to the very end and find the last text. So this should be the last node in the selection, not this one. Oops, wow, that's crashy when we click on it. Set inspected node. Hmm. I guess that, um, that was an anonymous marker box. He's not going to have a node, so we can fix that. Set inspected node. Who's calling this? Oh, look at that. This is not. Um... Wait, why is that failing? Set inspected node. But node is a null pointer. Sure. Inspector widget, set inspected node. Oh, look at that. We're. Where you're like dereferencing an old pointer. That's so stupid. Um, wait, don't we know the document if this widget somehow? Yeah, we have the document here. So um, really, we should just be doing this. Okay. Browser, don't crash when inspecting an anonymous um, layout node. Not all layout nodes have a corresponding DOM nodes. Okay, and then let's do the make select all action thingy. I feel like that one was really good. Um, GUI, add uh, GUI common actions, make select all action. Okay, and then the web add select all action to the web page view. Uh, this works by finding the very first and very last layout text in the nodes in the layout tree and then setting the selection bounds to those two nodes. Um, for some reason, or, um, 
for some reason it gets uh, glitchy if we set the um, very first node, very first and very last layout node as the selection bounds. But I didn't feel like uh, investigating that too closely right now. Okay. So that's pretty good. So actually we, we should probably verify that like I can select all the text and then paste it somewhere or I can select all copy and then paste. Otherwise um, it's not super good. So select all copy and Mm, it's not pasting. Oh, it did paste. Okay. Hmm. This part is kind of interesting, though. Like, we don't get a new line after when there's like a new line here. I feel like we should get a new line. <clears throat> but how do we do that? I guess whenever we encounter, I mean, we can kind of, we can do this in a kind of um, simple way because like the BR element is represented by a specific type of layout node. And we can also, um, or actually, let's just let's just go for. Or, mm, I don't uh, I don't know what's the right way to do this. Probably, if we are leaving a block, we could also insert a new line. Um, and then we should probably collapse those somehow. I'm not sure. Let's just fix that up though. Uh, we're probably not going to make this perfect today. We're, we're going to do a little bit better than this. So how do we do this? I guess when we're doing the middle nodes, this is really mostly relevant for the middle nodes. Um, so I guess what we'll do is we'll just check here if, or really else if, is layout line break. Um, we'll need to know about layout line break. Layout break. All right. Mm, actually, no, we just need to do a new line. Okay, and let's also do that for blocks, let's say. So, um, or is layout block. So this is a little bit crude, but let's see how it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that seems a lot better. And then, you know, it's like, then should we do like a double line break after the H1 element, things like that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, the, this does feel like a really good thing though. But like, you, you, could, you could go into all kinds of interesting um, refinements here. And this also makes me think, we could, um, before we do like full formatting copy, we could do something like copy to markdown, which would be kind of interesting because then we could like copy this could, uh, this is like H1, so it could become like, uh, you know, hash hash or whatever in markdown. Uh, and here are uh, list items, which we could turn into like a asterisk lists, things like that. Um, might be an interesting middle ground until we have like full HTML copy. Anyway. This is clearly nicer. So I think that works pretty okay. I have a, just like a big text uh, test here somewhere. 
this one. I'm just going to test out how this works if I copy this. Oop. Well, it basically works. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, that's that's a small, simple, but quite efficient hack, I have to say. So um, when cop mm, insert line new lines at br and block boundaries and copied text. Um, for, uh, um, to make uh, the plain text we copy out from web look at least somewhat like its original form. Um, let's insert new lines, uh, add br elements, and uh, whenever when we um, exit a block level element. Um, yeah, this is far from perfect, but seems to work pretty okay still. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so this is going to be the end of today's video. So if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out. Um, I'm really, really happy with this feature. I think this, um, this really enables us to use um, the libweb engine as a GUI element the way it was like actually intended all along uh, as a, a rich text control. And it always frustrated me that I couldn't copy stuff out because like now I can actually copy stuff out from a help document, right? It just works because this is also using libweb. Very, very cool. Um, I wonder how this would go here. Like if I, s oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh no, that's just my bad, okay. Uh, I wanted to copy some code here. And I guess there's no way to like extend the existing selection. It copies correctly, okay, that's so good. Yeah, yeah, I was a bit worried about uh, getting new lines correct here, but that just works the way, um, the way you want it to work. So very, very awesome. Uh, very, very good. Welcome to the, oops, I keep pressing the wrong, the wrong key combo to select stuff. Where am I? Am I just, no, there it is. Okay. I don't know. I think it's my, uh, my QEMU VM. It's like, sometimes it thinks I'm still holding like shift or something when I'm not. Um, and then it, the key binds don't work anyway. This is awesome. I'm really happy with the feature and I think it's gonna be great. So thank you for hanging out while I implemented it and I will see you next time.